Have you ever wondered how it is that some players seem to be able to take a solo no matter what the song? One of the easiest ways to do this is to use what's called pentatonic scales. So let's dig in and figure out how to do it. We'll be using the key of G for our studies, so let's begin by refreshing our memory as to what the notes are in the key of G. Here's the pattern. That's the very familiar Do, Re, Mi sound. There are a total of seven different notes in the scale. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, that's seven notes. We get back to G, there's our octave, the eighth note. The roots are circled in that diagram. So we're going to try to build a solo that utilizes the three main chords in the key of G which of course are G, C, and D. And to do that, we will learn a pentatonic for each one of those chords. A pentatonic scale takes this major scale, the G major scale, instead of using all the notes, it only uses five notes, just like a pentagon has five sides. A five note scale, it uses the first, second, third, skips over the fourth, plays the fifth note, and the sixth note skips over the seventh and you're back to the root. So there's your five notes. And if you time it correctly, you're going to hear that oldies song called My Girl. So that's one octave of the G pentatonic scale. Here's a diagram showing you a full two octaves of G pentatonic. The idea behind jamming with pentatonic scales is that you primarily are playing what I refer to as safe notes against the background chord. So during the G chord, when we play the G pentatonic notes, we don't have any major clashes. Should we try the two notes that we left out? Here's the C note. Maybe we're trying to switch to a C chord. And especially if we play this F sharp note, we got quite a clash. So by playing pentatonics, we stick with safe notes, you're going to sound good. As our chord progression moves to the C chord, we'll want to have a C pentatonic scale. nicely outlines that C chord right there and notice I used that my girl sound again to be sure I had the right notes. All these notes are still in the key of G. And we have a couple more. So now I'm going to demonstrate doing a couple measures of G and switching to the C. You should be able to hear the change even though I'm not playing chords. So notice that these pentatonic scales kind of outline the background chord with a bunch of safe notes. Here are the notes of the D pentatonic scale. A real quick warning that the open third string G is not part of the scale pattern. A couple extra notes up on the first string. Many people, myself included, more often play the D pattern with the first finger lined up at the second fret. When you do that, you'll be playing off of your D chord. It would look like this. Instead of playing the open second string, I'll play the fourth fret on the third string. Here's a 
demonstration of moving from the high part of the G pattern into the D pattern. Two measures of G. And so as I was moving down, D chord I gotta grab a note that's in the D pattern not only in the D pattern but it sounds good to have a note in the D chord so I landed on this A note so as a lead player you're kind of indicating the chord changes because you land on a chord tone so that's a little tip on how to make your playing sound a little better when first learning to jam with pentatonics it's very common to form your ideas from root to root. When you move to your C chord, it outlines the C chord. Also notice that people are most comfortable starting low and moving higher, or just as if they were practicing the scale. So then you can purposely, after you're comfortable knowing what the notes are in the pattern, flip things around. So I'll start on the higher G note, and land on the lower one, still keeping the idea of just using one octave at a time. I mentioned earlier about trying to target a chord tone as you are switching chords. The easiest way to think of doing that is to know the roots of your chords. Here's G, here's C. So I'll be noodling in the G scale. before I start jamming in C. To reinforce that your ideas are working, you'll want to play against some background rhythm chords. So I'll be playing over this progression, and the reason I've chosen this progression is that it is the most common progression in all of bluegrass. All of these songs can be played with just this group of chords. It's also very common in country music. Here's a few songs that use it in country music. So here's a demonstration played against the progression. See if you can't hear that I'm switching my pentatonic patterns as the chord changes. One thing that will help add a little polish to your playing is to have a lick or two ready to go in specific situations. So right there at the end where things were wrapping up I played what you call a tag lick that went like this. And so having just one or two of those worked out really helps your playing sound a little more sophisticated. One last tip before we turn you loose for you to try your own improvisation is if you're having trouble playing to the speed of the track, meaning having trouble doing those down and up notes, well, just play longer notes. just so that you learn to get the sound and trust that you're getting notes that sound good against the background chords, you can always then go back and add a little fancy picking. All right, now it's your turn to give it a try. We'll provide the backing track, and as you start, keep playing even if you feel like, well, you were a little late switching pentatonics. Just start to let your ear hear that you're doing things that work. And keep going all the way to the end because when you finish, you'll have a huge reward.